I just got a little list of questions, guys. Some of them are pretty strange, but I'm gonna have to answer them. You know why? You see, my YouTube channel is demonetized. And because of that, uh, I have a crowdfunding thingy where people can subscribe and contribute to my channel. And uh, to some of the higher tiers of subscriptions, actually, there is a reward in which uh, the people who sponsor my channel are able to receive a personalized video from me in which I answer their questions in public, in a video. Now there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is that, and the bad news, is that nobody ever uses this option. Um, that's good news because I have over 74 sponsors and if all of them were going to make me answer questions on YouTube, I would be very busy and didn't have, have, didn't have much time for moth videos. But it's also bad news. It's bad news because it means that maybe the rewards I give in return for sponsorship, maybe they're not engaging enough to motivate people. But it does imply that people are just there to sponsor me and watch me make videos and not because they want anything in return for it. Uh, there's 10, ten um, very interesting questions here. Some of them are pretty odd, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Thank you, Draconius Ultimatus, for sponsoring my channel. This video is for you, because you are so kind to support me. And today I, uh, I am taking some of my time to answer your questions. First, uh, your first question to me is Will you ever collab with other popular insect YouTubers such as Insect House? Hmm... Well, I have two problems. Problem number one is my channel is kind of unique and there's not that many other channels to collaborate with. There is a very limited amount of YouTubers who do wildlife and an even more limited amount of YouTubers who do insects and an even more limited amount of YouTubers who do butterflies and moths. So that makes my options very limited. Now I can think of a few YouTubers who I could collaborate with or maybe YouTubers who make very unrelated content would be possible too. I mean, if you enjoy each other's personalities and content, sometimes you can also do collaborations. But there's also a second problem. I have a lot of animals at home that require a lot of care and attention. And because of that, it's not really possible for me to travel very far. Uh, when I travel, it's usually in winter, because in winter I take a break from this hobby. And then I have a few months for myself. And then it's full-time breeding insects again. Um, therefore, the chances of any collaborations like that happening are small. Although, of course, I would be open to it if there were any in the area. But... I, I don't see any collaborations happening anytime soon. That's actually not true. I do collaborations a lot, but not with other YouTubers. However, I have collaborations with museums. I have collaborations with scientists, entomologists. And uh, in fact, I have a few down the pipeline because uh, I was actually planning uh, to do more interviews, to travel more. Um, I ask of your patience, give it a few months and uh, it could happen, but not with other YouTubers, no. Question number two, are you ever planning on getting your own house or apartment? Well, it's true, I do live with my parents, but my parents are very tolerant. Uh, I don't feel restricted in any of my freedoms. Secondly, financially, I am still not doing that great. Uh, I don't know if I could be, would be able to afford a house. So it's... When you ask me, are you ever planning on getting your own house or apartment? The question is yes, I would if I could afford it. But the truth is I probably can't really afford it. So it's not really about what I plan. 
it's about my options. Not about what I want, but what I can or what I can't. And for right now, seems, at least for a while, I'll still be living here. Question number three. Other than Falco and your moths, do you have any other pets? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I don't. I only have a lot of insect species, which are all moths and indeed one parrot. So, question number four. What is your personal opinion on the COVID-19 and the measures taken to protect others? I think preventive measures are very effective. And it pains me that there are so many people who protest against the fact that they have to wear a face mask or the fact that they protest against the fact that they can't have parties. I think that's pathetic. The statistics have clearly indicated that preventive measures have worked. In fact, look at the two countries who have the most infections in the world. They are Brazil and the United States. And the president of Brazil, he uh, actually said he doesn't care about the virus when it first arrived and that it's all a hoax and he did nothing. This is why Brazil is number one in the death rate right now, because they didn't have preventive measures. This is very clear evidence that preventive measures work. And I know there's a lot of people who say, well, wearing a face mask, it doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. I think you are overestimating the effect of a face mask. It doesn't make you immune to viruses, that's true. Even if you are wearing mask, you can still get sick. Even if you are wearing a mask, you can still infect others. But it has been proven um, to cut the rate down for a few percent. For a few percent. And you know what the funny thing about percentages is they add up. If I have 1% less chance of infecting you with a virus, and there's thousands upon thousands of people wearing these masks, all of which have 1% less chance of infecting each other, well, maybe that could add up to 10,000 infections or more. Even if it's a small chance, if a lot of people do it, a small chance will add up. So, um, yeah. I am a supporter of preventive measures. I am a, uh, a supporter of listening to professionals. If you haven't studied medicine, you're probably not smart enough to form your own opinion about virology. That sounds condescending, but it's true. I see a lot of people who are like a construction worker or an artist giving their opinions about how dangerous this virus is. I'm sorry, but you haven't went to school, so you have no clue. That sounds arrogant, but you need to face reality, okay? Virology is very complex. And I think it's really stupid that the unwashed masses and the, the basically the cattle of our society, all of them have very heated opinions. Here's my advice to you, shut up and listen to the professionals when it comes to a global pandemic. Otherwise, I've been doing pretty well, even in these dreadful times. Financially, I have been doing very badly. However, the uh, government is giving me now compensation. So I'm getting minimum wage for like seven months as compensation for the damage that the virus gave. Um, and because of that, I have a very long vacation right now. So, despite that, uh, I'm having a good time now. First, uh, I was worried about finances, like how no, I'm, how am I gonna supposed to work during this crisis? But uh, the problem was solved, and now I'm relaxed. The next question is on average, how many Monster Energy drinks? Do you consume per week? Mm. That's an interesting question because, well, if you look at my channel, it becomes clear. I drink a lot of this energy drink. In some of my videos, you can see the cans in the background or I'm just drinking it during the video. I drink too much of it. It's not healthy. I don't want to promote it. It's not paid promotion. 
Energy drinks are very bad for your health. They contain a ton of sugar. Um, I think I do have somewhat of an, uh, almost somewhat of an addiction to them. It's my worst habit. Good news, I don't smoke. I barely drink. Uh, I ride my bike everywhere. Physically, I'm reasonably fit. I don't take any medicines at the moment. Ah, oh, but the energy drink, that's, that's my vice. That is my Archilles heel. And in, I think in one such a can, there's like 300 calories. That's like a liquid hamburger. Uh, I also have problems sleeping often. I'm awake at night. Um, it's also because of, I think, my caffeine consumption. That being said, I try to limit my consumption to one or two cans per day. Um, but it's not about how many cans per day I drink. It, it's, I drink it consistently every day, one or two, one or two every day. So uh, without a break. So per week it would be around six or seven. Oh, that's the doorbell. Did you hear that? It's not meant for me. So uh, it's my mom taking a package from the mailman. Now your next question is um, number six. What is the highest sum of money you have donated to an internet thought? I'm not sure what I have, what, what, what to do with a term such as internet thought. I think you're referring to girls on the internet, Twitch streamers who have revealing clothes and um, are doing these streams who target lonely men and it motivates them to donate. <coughs> I think it's a funny question. I'm not sure how to respond. Uh, personally, it's, I, look, I don't want to sound like an, a boomer who is like, oh no, that's morally wrong and blah, blah, blah. You shouldn't be watching girls on the internet. Hey, if you're a female streamer, if you're a female YouTuber and uh, you have sex appeal and you know how to exploit that, all power to you, man, by all means. Uh, please use it to your advantage. But uh, personally, uh, that kind of content does not really appeal to me. I think a lot of the people who donate to such, such internet personalities are lonely men. Um, I do think it uh, it spreads a bad message in the sense that, well, imagine you were, you, I mean, I used to be very ex inexperienced with women. Thankfully, in the last few years, I become very uh, confident. So right now it's not a problem. But when I was younger, I was very shy. I was very hard time approaching women and telling that I like, telling a girl that I like her. And uh, thankfully, I've grown out of that. But I know there's a lot of men who haven't grown out of this. And um, I think for them, it's not a good idea to, to give girls money just to receive attention in return, you know? Because the moment that you have to pay someone, that you have to give somebody money just to get attention in return, it basically implies that you are not really worthy of any attention uh, unless, unless you literally pay for it, right? God, what's this stupid noise is here around me? Sorry, it's very distracting. There's a lot of construction work going on outside and uh, this pisses me off a little, I'm sorry. <sighs> yes, but uh, what was it I was about to say? Uh, yes. When you like a girl, right? Boys of the internet, listen to me for a second. If you are attracted to a girl, and in a normal and healthy relationship or a normal or healthy date, uh, you and her have mutual interest in each other, right? It's uh, attraction but even platonic, but also romantic relationships uh, are mutual, right? 
And the moment that you have to pay somebody money in order to receive attention, and the moment that you have to pay somebody money in order to receive affection, you're basically subconsciously accepting the fact that you are not worthy of attention so much, uh, maybe from females, that you have to literally give them money. If you find a nice girl and you want a normal relationship, then you should be worthy of her attention without having to pay money for it. And uh, I think that's my only moral, moral objection to uh, this kind of content. But I, I don't want to sound too conservative. Uh, I don't really care, like, if you have attractive body and uh, you can use it to, for publicity and you have no bad feelings about it. And uh, by all means, please go ahead, right? It's the internet. You can make whatever kind of video you want. And uh, I, I don't really like the term internet thoughts that much for that reason because well I'm not I'm not a fan of that kind of content but I'm also not very morally opposed to it, it doesn't make me angry uh, so but your question was what is the highest sum of money you have donated to an internet thought so for me the answer is zero dollar because I don't donate to those kind of streamers it doesn't appeal to me it doesn't appeal to me to give money to someone just because I find them attractive. That's that's weird. At least in my perception, that's weird. Especially if I'm desperate for attention. I think um, if I feel un unworthy or unloved, uh, it will make it will make my depression and loneliness worse. If I ha literally have to give people money to notice me, right? Because you're subconsciously training yourself and accepting the fact that. You're such an unworthy of a person. People should be paid to interact with you. So, uh, no. I am a patron, though, of another channel. It's called China Uncensored, but they are not internet thoughts. It's a very serious political channel. It speaks out about China and the various issues that are going on there. I don't want to get too political on my channel because this channel is about butterflies and moths. And I pick my battles. My battle is fighting for the environment and the insects I care about. So I don't want to inject too much politics in my videos because I don't want to make more enemies. Uh, I need everybody as my ally. So, uh, but I do actually have political opinions. And one, is, one of them is I, uh, I stand against the totalitarian regimes, including the one in China. I think uh, the Chinese Communist Party is one of the most cruel and incompetent regimes this planet has ever seen. And the YouTube channel China Uncensored, uh, it ex well, it talks about the various issues in China, it exposes them sometimes. And I donate to their channel. Funny story is I, um, I never used to donate to any YouTubers. I thought the idea was very stupid. In fact, like why would you give money to a stranger that you worked for? But uh, now I am here and uh, my channel is demonetized and uh, I'm doing, I'm working really hard for my channel. Uh, some of my videos take multiple months to produce. Uh, it's literally a ton of work. It's, it is work. It should be taken more seriously. YouTube is work. For me, it's a lot of work and stress and time. And I get zero for it in return from YouTube because I'm demonetized. And uh, that made me consider quitting my YouTube channel. But it's because of the donations of my sponsors, such as you, that they keep this YouTube channel alive and allow me to put so much time in it. And that made me reconsider my opinion about donations, because I'm here benefiting from them. And I'm like, it makes sense, you know, I see the value in it. And because I'm on the receiving end on it, I also want to pass it around. If my channel becomes successful and um, it grows and I have a big budget, I will also donate some of my budget to other YouTube channels who need it. Because finally I understand why it's important to pass it around. And China Uncensored is a channel that I like watching myself when I'm bored. So that's probably one of the few creators that I uh, literally donate to. Question number seven. 
Is there any other meat or animal product that you would consider off limits for consumption? That's a very particular and old question. Is there any meat or animal project that I think is off limit for consumption? Of course, first of all, there is, um, uh, I'm, I, I'm, I care about animal cruelty, but what makes me really angry is people eating endangered species. And anything I would consider off limit for consumption are animal species that are at the brink of extinction, especially because humans like to eat them. So that includes wildlife such as pangolins, for example. I mean, I live in the Netherlands, so I have no idea where I would eat a pangolin if I live here, but I think it's pretty unethical. But uh, also things like whale meat. Uh, whales have a very, very sh uh, long lifespan they produce slowly, reproduce slowly, and fishing them for consumption doesn't make sense to me. Uh, eating endangered species in general doesn't make sense to me. Why do you have to eat an endangered animal when, they, when you can get something like chicken or cow or pig, but instead you choose to eat animals to extinction? It doesn't make sense. So that's what definitely what I would consider to be off limit, threatened species. So I would say anything from pangolins to, I don't know, what, what are some delicacies of rare animals? I know there's probably some crazy people who will, who will eat just about anything. So uh, don't eat threatened species. Uh, and the animal products, of course, anything derived from them. And also things like tigers, uh, bears, etc. Number eight, how many social media accounts do you think you have in total, including accounts that aren't listed or no longer in use? Not that much. Let's think, I have Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and that's about it. I, I don't use TikTok, I think it's cringy. I don't use Twitter, I think Twitter sucks and should be boycotted. I would rather be dead than be found on Twitter of all places. So uh, there's a lot of social media platforms that I do not use. Uh, but yes, mainly YouTube, Facebook, and uh, let me think. Yeah, no, that's really, that's literally it. So there's, there's not much. I think one that I can mention is Interpels. Does that count? Interpels is not really social media though. So uh, no, I'm sorry, I don't have anything special in this regard. And number nine, if you were given the executive decision to eliminate one family from the order of Lepidoptera, which one would you choose and why? So you're asking me, somebody who likes moths, what family of moths he would wipe out if given the choice? <sighs> well, of course, I would want to limit the damage. Some families of moths contain thousands of species. For example, if I were to say I want to eliminate tiger moths, the Arctinae, then um, I would wipe out about 11,000 species in one second. So I would choose the, um, look, there's, well, it's one of my favorite species that I would kill, actually. This is Cartea saturnoides. It's a very, very, very rare and unique animal from Australia. It comes from a very unique family of moths, the, uh, the Carteidae. And it's the only member of this family. It is truly a unique species in its own family. And I would wipe it out despite this moth being one of my favorite moths in the world, uh, it would limit the extinction to one single species. I would be very sad that it was extinct, but uh, it's an obvious choice since uh, choosing another, video, another, another family would mean I would have to wipe out hundreds or thousands of species. 
Number 10. How many healthy moths or caterpillars have you dispatched of and disposed of in the garbage or compost? I don't know who gave you the memo that I throw healthy moths and caterpillars in the garbage or compost, but I don't. That sounds pretty psychotic. Now I do dispose of sick individuals. I euthanize them, uh, especially when they are crippled or infected with a virus that could uh, infect my other species. Then I dispose of them. But you are asking me healthy individuals. Now why in my right mind would I want to kill healthy individuals? I don't see a reason for it. Maybe by accident, when you throw them away. There have been a few instances where I've accidentally threw some of my eggs in the garbage that I just ordered online. Yikes. But that's not really on purpose. So, uh, so the answer is none. I mean, I don't see any reason why I would do that, man. Bro. Thank you for your list of questions. Uh, if you are a, one of my patrons in the higher tiers, then um, it's a good idea to check out Patreon and see if you are eligible for an FHQ, because some of you are, especially those who are like in the, uh, I think it's in the six or above ten dollar tiers. Um, you can actually send me a list of questions and get a personalized video from me, like this one. But it uh, turns out not not many people. Even if they are still paying me, not, not many people want to use the reward. That's fine though. Uh, if you don't want to, I'm not forcing you. But uh, I think it could be fun. It's a nice way to know my audience. Thank you for your sponsorship. I hope you enjoyed the video and my answers. Um, I'm working on a lot of moth videos behind the scenes. They take a little bit more time to complete, but it's gonna happen. Bye-bye.